Hello everybody! Welcome to another Valheim video. Today we're going to be learning about the plan build mod for Valheim, and also Infinity Hammer. Welcome to the timestamps page. This area allows you to easily navigate to exactly the part of the video that you want to learn about. I don't expect anyone to watch the whole thing, and by organizing it this way I can ensure that you get to exactly what you want to learn. You can skip ahead to this timestamp if you want to skip my review of the sections, but here's what we'll be covering. If you want to support my work, then consider getting your own dedicated Valheim server. More on that at the end of the video. This tutorial is going to focus on plan build, but I'd be amiss to not talk about Infinity Hammer because it just plugs right into plan build and really you should use both of them. The way Infinity Hammer works is it basically gives your hammer, boom, goblin camp. And what's even cooler about that is it gets generated when you click, so every time it's different. See? After you've installed plan build, you'll notice that in your crafting menu, the base crafting menu that's available by pressing tab, you have these two items, the blueprint rune and the plan hammer. The blueprint rune provides you with all of these tools, the ability to copy and paste anything you select, and a little place to store all of your blueprints. The clipboard gets wiped every time you leave, whereas the blueprints are just there. If you make a blueprint, it's in your folder. And you can even share it with other people through an item in the game. It's pretty cool. When you're using the blueprint rune, you can undo what you do if you catch it in time. So for example, let's say I flatten everything by mistake. All I have to do is type bp.undo, right? And then look at that, it just pops everything right back to how it was. If you ever freak out, all you have to do is type bp undo. And then if you undo it, but you actually want to redo it, all you have to do is type bp redo, and it'll just revert back to what you did. Next, we'll move on to the plan hammer, which is an item that can be crafted for just one wood. It's basically like the regular hammer if you use it, except what you'll find is that everything looks all cool because it's colorful. I wish everything wasn't gray all the time. But if you place one of these items, look at that. It's just like a ghost. This is just a way that you can build without the resources so that you can know exactly what you need and there's even a way to see what it looks like. The plan hammer also has a delete functionality and this is for when you accidentally place these images. All you have to do is just click and then boom, it's gone. The next item is actually an, a build item. It's within your regular hammer menu. So you go there and then you see that there's this another totem here. And this is essentially an auto builder. You throw your material into this chest here and he eats it up and builds those plans that we saw earlier. I'll make a simple bonfire right there. And next I'll open up the chest and place in the material to make the bonfire. And as you see, it just gets eaten up, it vanishes and then boop, the bonfire is here. When you look at the plan totem, it'll tell you what plans are nearby and also how much material you need to build that stuff. If I go here and let's get some complicated traps over there and some portals maybe, and some of these traps here, and then also some carts and a treasure chest, you know, look at that, that's a lot of different material. It would take me a while, even though I know the game really well, to figure out all the material I need to make this stuff. But I can just go over here and boom, look at that. Plant totem is really cool. Next, we'll talk about the Skulled Crystal, which is something that you can make just with having one Grey Dwarf Eye. And this is basically a helmet. And when you wear it, you can suddenly see what everything looks like. But keep in mind, this is only because of the item. It's actually all invisible. And say that you're playing on a server with plan build, you'll be able to see this stuff but another player who doesn't have plan build installed will just see nothing. Now, all of this is well and great, but I mean, that's really complicated. Let's look at something more realistic and simple. So typically, you know, Valheim will make something more like this. There we go, she's beautiful. And you know, when, once you create your masterpiece, look at that, there we go, we got our shelter. Well, you, you worked so hard on it, you know, and it's so... Beautiful. You, you just have to save it. And that's where making your own blueprint comes in. And it's actually really simple. The easiest way to do it is to just use the blueprint tool and then click underneath. And if you look in the distance, you see this? The, what's up with those lines? 
I'm scrolling in and out here. And if you just make the circle around the structure you want to save forever and keep cherished, then you just click. And it'll select every game object, or well, every building object, that's within that radius. And then you can just save it. If you change the category here, this sort of changes the folder it's in. Blueprints is the main default one, so we're going to go with that. Here it is, in our, our most beautiful house. We can see that we can move this around. Now, placing stuff can get kind of finicky. Obviously, now that we've made something so beautiful, we'll have to put a lot more of them into the world. And we can just place it, and boom, look at that. We have a couple. I can rotate them, move them around. You'll notice when you actually try and do it, that when you use the blueprint rune, instead of everything being placed directly, it's going to be these ghost images. You need to go into your files for Bepinex. And in the main Bepinex folder, you'll see these folders here, config, patchers, plugin. Click on config, and from there, ignore the plan build folder, because this is where your blueprints go. You're looking for the config file, which is here, this marcopogo.planbuild. Your computer might think it can't open these, but just open them in a text editor, and you'll be able to see it and edit it. You don't need anything fancy. And the reason it's placing your blueprints as plans is because this setting is like this, planned. And if you want to make it so when you place a blueprint, it places it exactly how it is, then you need to do direct, okay? Remember that anytime you change a config file, you have to exit Valheim and then reload it to see the effects. And I'll get more into these configuration files at the end of the video. For now, let's move on. Now that that's out of the way, we need to talk a little bit about placing your items because it's actually really tricky to get used to. And that's one of the main reasons I was incentivized to make this tutorial. And the first problem I had is that Whenever I try and place something, it's like, it's really hard for me to get it exactly where I want it. So let's say that I want to put it here. I have to like flatten out the terrain and stuff and maybe I put it there. But then like half of it's underground. It's all weird. I mean, it's just, it's, it doesn't have the beauty in it. You know, it doesn't even give me shelter. What kind of house doesn't do that? I built this house to exacting standards and obviously the, the original models give you shelter. See? See, I mean, what's the point of a house that doesn't give you any shelter, right? You can rotate it with the scroll wheel, but in addition to that, you can hold either Control, Alt, or Shift. And this allows you to sort of scroll your camera around, right? So I can zoom in and out here, which will help me kind of get the bigger picture. This is holding Shift. And then if I go back to how I was, now I can hold Control. And if I use my scroll wheel, you can see that the building is shifting on one of the axis. What you're going to find is that usually when you want to place something, it's all like all over the place, especially if you have a really big structure. And what you need to do is move it up or down. So hold control and alt and then the scroll wheel and look at that. Without moving your cursor, you can just move the building up to exactly where it needs to be. And this is... Another great use case for plan build is actually just to make building really grand, large structures much, much faster. So let's make a wall, for example. We're gonna make it too thick and too high, just like this. There we go, boom. And then, now that we've made our wall, we can use the copy paste feature of the blueprint room. So to do that, we can just go to the tools here, and then we're going to, instead of using this create new blueprint, we're going to just go to add to blueprint selection. So here you can just point and click and we're gonna click on all eight pieces, or I guess seven <laughs> pieces of this wall. And then I'm gonna right click again and see this check mark, edit selection. You click on that and then this is how you save it. And once you're in the edit selection mode, you just click anywhere, it doesn't matter, and you can save it, okay? And for now, we're just gonna use this copy feature. And you can see that it builds, or it leaves it remaining. And then you have this item. And you can just move it around and rebuild the walls as you want. But you can see that it's kind of placed precariously into the ground. And so we have to kind of use what we learned earlier to rise the wall up to the right height. 
So obviously you can make something more beautiful than this, but this allows you to create something with fractals. For example, let's say that you are creating a cathedral or something else. You can only make one quarter of that cathedral. And then you can use this copy paste thing to really easily just snap everything into place. And believe it or not, what I just showed you was the hard way to do it. Let's move on to the snap point marker and the center marker, because these really enable you to easily and perfectly place objects. Now, let's say for whatever reason, you want things to be indestructible. This is actually really important when you're server building. Certain areas need to be indestructible, particularly around the start zone, because these areas are hub spots for griefers and they're gonna destroy them through any means possible. So you need to do your best to protect them and inconvenience the griefer. So to do this, you need to make these sort of invulnerable things that forces them to use an actual hack. We'll need to go back into our config file, open it up, and then look at this value here. Set piece health to its maximum value. What this means, basically, is it's invincible except through being destroyed by a build hammer. So, you know, players can still destroy something by trying to unbuild it with the hammer. You can prevent that by using a ward, and, and if you set this unlimited health setting to true, then every blueprint that you place will be invincible to damage. So. As we mentioned before, when we're placing our items, it can be kind of hard to place everything, because as you can see, there's no snapping. But that is it's like a pain, and it takes forever. And there's an easier way. If we go into our blueprint room, and then into the middle area of the tools section, we can find these snap point markers. And they look like these big X's, and if you move them around, nothing happens, right? So, but if you look at a snap point, it'll snap into it. And we're gonna see what happens if we place one in this top corner, just like that. And now what I'm gonna do is the same steps as earlier, but also select the snap point marker. And you can see that now that we've selected it, in the summary, it shows one snap point marker and four pieces. Make sure that when you use them, they get selected. Then go to the checkbox here called edit selection, and then click to save the blueprint. Let's look at the blueprint this wall right here and see what happens when we go up to that same spot. Huh, nothing. If we just take it down, boom, look at that. It snaps right into place. And you can see that it's actually going all the way to the corner. So you have to experiment a little bit, right? To see how you wanna put the snap points because they're not always gonna go exactly where you expect them to. But by putting them on the corner, we can just do this. Look, see, place that, place that. The next menu item are these center point markers. And you can see that these look exactly like the snap point markers. So if you notice when we look at our blueprint, let's go back to our crazy house thing. It's sort of like the, the center point is right here and we can rotate around it, right? But what if I wanted it to spin in place like on an axis? Well, to do that, all you have to do is place the center point here, the center point marker, right? We're gonna find roughly the center of this structure. I'm gonna say it's right there. And I placed it, see, it's there. I'm gonna show you about another feature. Most of these tools have hotkeys. So if you hold Alt, you see how there's this circle? Now, if I just change the size of the circle, I can click everything. And this will select every single object within that circle. And click on save. Let's look at the blueprint. Find it right here. And start spinning it around. As you can see, this version of it, right, spins all the way around like that. So it's kind of hard to orient yourself. This is pretty small. But imagine if this was a huge castle. It would be really, really confusing. So what you need to do is change the center points to be exactly where you want them to be. Next we have the terrain modification marker, which is the same kind of X as the other ones, but this will essentially make a column of earth or a pit to reach itself. To prove the point, let's put the terrain modification marker at the very top. Now when we place this, it's going to 
fill in a bunch of terrain above it and it should destroy itself. Boom, look at that. Suddenly there's a bunch of terrain. And this is actually what locations do with Infinity Hammer when you place them. If we come over here and place this, it looks like it'll just go into the ground, right? But if we place it up on this hill, watch what happens. Boom. It actually changes the terrain depending on where it gets placed. And you can see here that in front of the door, the terrain was raised, right? Just like that, to always be level with the staircase. So the game Moving forward to our terrain tools. If we look here at this one, this terrain tools option, this is an incredibly time-saving tool because as you can see, it starts and there's just a circle. And anywhere you click, it makes it flat. And if we make it bigger, like a really, really big thing, then boom, look at that. It flattens everything. And you'll notice that it doesn't do it perfectly. See? What's going on here? Well, everywhere you click, right, if I go up here, it'll flatten everything to that point. But then if I go and I look right at a building, boom, it's going to try and make it as tall as it can. But the game actually has a limit on how tall these things can get. So, for example, if I try and make everything too tall, like that, it'll actually make them look like natural and mountain-like. So if you raise everything to the max height, it goes from looking weird and like circular, right? Like this. Boom. <laughs> but as you can see, it's really easy to start making a real big mess. I mean, and to be honest, this actually looks really realistic. Um, I'm kind of surprised how this messing around came out. Because normally when you mess around with this terrain tool, it just makes everything look very abrupt and jagged. So if, if we go down here, for example, and start doing that, we can see that if we keep clicking, it sort of evens things out and we can go around and make a field, see? But now you see all of this jaggedness and that's where holding down control comes in. Let's compare them. Normally, if you look on an edge and you click on it, it'll get forced to be like a circle, see? So if we go here and do it again, it gets forced and it looks quite unnatural because it's very jagged. So if you want to round it off and make it look more natural, then just hold down control and do the same thing. And you'll notice that instead of making these jagged edges, it makes these really smooth round edges. Another hotkey for the terrain tool is to just reset everything back to normal, which is really, really useful because you can cause a lot of chaos with the terrain tool, as you can see. So to do that, just hold down Alt, and then everything in the circle, boom. Right back to normal and I die again. <laughs> and holding down Alt will make everything revert back to normal, see? I can just move this around and it'll make some craziness happen. And you can just make the circle incredibly big, right? Point. And then if you do it that way, then everything will just pop right back to where it was. And when you're using plan build, you'll have to get comfortable toggling the mod on and off because as you're about to see, and this happens to try and make it harder for people to abuse plan build and destroy people's servers. To fix this issue, I recommend that you save the plan build file from your installation in your quick access area if you're in Windows or the Mac equivalent. That way, you can just double click on it, and then you'll go to the mod area, and you can just rename this file here, this planbuild.dll. Just take away the dot, which will change the file type extension, and then it just thinks it's a blank file, and the mod won't work. Then, all you have to do when you want to re-enable it is come back into this folder and put the dll where it's supposed to be, so to speak, by naming it properly. This is a great chance to look at the removing game objects tool. So next to the terrain tool is something called a deletion tool. But what if we take it over here? Boom. See, it doesn't affect enemies. Like these buildable, buildable objects, they stay there. And that's because they're player built. But if I go over here and I use this deletion tool on this black marble base, what happens? Oh, all sorts of crazy stuff. Suddenly, the black marble base is literally floating. 
And that's because it actually has one of those terrain modification markers. Now, let's say you're in a pickle for whatever reason. You know, you could have accidentally spawned a hundred glowing mushrooms and wrecked everybody, or you have this weird floating tower. Well, worry not, because there is a command called force delete. And if you just type force delete and then a number, a small number, seriously, you don't want to go too far with this. So let's make it a bit bigger. Let's make it force delete 10 and then boom, it just vanishes everything that's near your character. Boom. And this is another way that hackers abuse servers. And I tell you this stuff because when you defend your server, you need to know what they do. They basically find what you have that's most dear and then they go force delete, boom, and your shit's gone. <laughs> that's why you need backups. But what's, what's great about these hackers is they really know what they're doing. And so they know that, I mean, that's kind of lame. There's no more building. What's up with that, that, that patch of dirt? The person's going to know their building used to be there. I mean, the proof's in the dirt. Where'd the dirt come from? It's a good thing we got this paint tool. So you can just click this and then boom, it resets the terrain to whatever you want. If I hold alt, I can make everything paved. If I hold control, I can make everything dirt. And if I just click regularly, it's going to reset it back to the base terrain. So here it looks like this. In the ashlands, it's all dark. In the mountains, it's all snowy. It really depends on which biome you're in. And don't... speaking of that, here is my ban list. And these are all people who I have caught. Um, there's actually a way that you can look these people up. So let's find some of the more uh, grievous offenders, let's say. Uh, all you have to do is go to Steam and then steamcommunity.com slash profiles, and then their Steam ID. And then you just search for it. And then here, it'll usually, for the sketchy people, for some reason, they often have their profile set to private. Most people don't give a fuck about this. They don't even know about this part. So when people set it to private, it doesn't guarantee they're sketchy, but from my experience, most of the people who do sketchy stuff and use hacks on the server, they either look like this, when you look up their ID, they have it set to private. Or, the typical people, here we go. This is the typical griefer. Like, you look them up. I mean, look, this, this person made it this way. This is professional, right? I mean, obviously, these people are a pain. And so profiles like this join your server, and they use hacking tools to just destroy your crap. Like, these are the people who join your server, and then they go force delete 100. And then boom, they just delete everything. This is literally what they do. Like, I, I think what they do is they stay up really late, I guess in their mom's basements or something, masturbating, and they just do this. They like try and get into servers and then they run around and then they just try and destroy everything that people care about. And sometimes they get even worse. So they'll spawn a bunch of wards underneath your base and totally screw you. So you have to protect your servers. <laughs> now. There's some other items. If you go to your hammer and then look in the furniture section, we can see this standing blueprint rune and this blueprint rune library. These items will only show up to people who also have plan build installed, but it's a way for you to share your blueprints with other people and also get them yourself. So if we place this item here, right? This, and then we go up to it, we can actually open builds here, and anybody on the server could use these. So this will allow anybody on the server to have access to the same things. Now, if you would like to download some builds, then I really recommend going to Volhemians. Volhemians is an awesome fan website where I also post some content, but I don't own Volhemians. Most people who use this website are actually using the build section. So what they do is they upload their builds. And what's really cool is if you filter this by downloads, by just going here to this build filter section, then you get rid of this video preview here and then click apply filters. You get a list of 300 buildings that other people have made and you can just download them and then boom, they'll be inside your blueprint thing if you put it in the folder. And so to show you an example of this, look at some things that people have made. This is something by Mutant Art Cat. Boom, we have this beautiful tower. Look at that, so fast. And all because I just downloaded it from Valhemians. There's around 300 buildings. So let's 
build some more. <laughs> Purse, in addition to this large standing blueprint rune, there's also these smaller blueprint rune library items, right? And you could just place this anywhere, usually on top of a table, and it's exactly the same as the previous one. It's just a way to share blueprints. There's even ways to limit this in the configuration file. I think you're ready now to tackle the config file. So I think you're ready to look at these settings and I'll kind of talk to you about some of the most important ones. The first two, and maybe the distance, are really the ones that you're gonna be looking at a lot. You don't actually have to use these settings. You could just use a hotkey. I think if you press control and alt, then you'll place a plan. So there's probably a hotkey to always place a direct one, like to bypass these settings. And then this one here means that your items will be indestructible. And that also means that they'll be able to float. So they won't, you could make like a castle in the sky and everything will be red if you look at it, but it'll never break. This stuff will work with vanilla Valheim. So other players can join, even, even though you've done things with this mod, the other players are able to see everything because the mod changes stuff that's already in the game. It doesn't like add a new thing into it. So the end result is always a vanilla Valheim experience that anybody without the mod could join and play. And I think that is beautiful. Since we're in the config section, we should look at the config for Infinity Hammer, because again, this is a really, really important mod for server building, just as important as plan build. Most of the other settings here are based on preference. So Infinity Hammer basically removes most of the limits of the regular hammer. For example, you can build as far away as you can see instead of close with a workbench. You don't need a workbench or any of that kind of stuff. Also, you can place items that you can't normally build. So it basically makes every game object in the whole game a placeable item. You can even place the music. You can place the, the boss battles, the bosses, everything. It's really, really powerful. And you can sort of edit it so that, right, you, you ignore wards or you don't ignore wards. The build areas, like the no build start area or inside the queen's lair, you can turn these on and off. So there's all sorts of stuff that you can customize, like you can allow building in dungeons. Um, keep in mind, this mod will only work on your local game. If you set these things up and then you try and join a dedicated server, you'll join, but the mod won't do anything. Your hammer will just be normal. You have to be on your own world and then your hammer is infinite. Without further ado, let's get into the installation, because I know that for a lot of you, the installation can feel intimidating and overwhelming, especially because, look at this, we gotta install plan build, Jotun, Bepnex, Hookjan, Infinity, like, that's so much stuff! But don't, don't, calm down, it's okay. I got you. We're gonna figure this out together. Now that our vanilla Valheim is set up, you can see that this is the latest version and there's no mods anywhere because it shows a little screen here that says you're using a modded version of Valheim. So let's go into the installation. We're going to find plan build, Jotun, Bepinex, this should be the first one really, hook gen patcher, and infinity hammer, okay? And download all of these. As you're downloading everything, make sure that you're using the manual download version. So for example, make sure I go to the up most recent one. This one's actually kind of old, but it doesn't break anything. So I guess they haven't updated it. And then you click here, manual download. You can use... To begin, we'll make a new folder called Valheim Mod Files, and we'll take all of these compressed folders and put them in there. Now that we've done that, we'll take these one by one and extract them into this same folder, Valheim Mod Files. And just for reference, you should start with Bepinex. I did it a bit backwards there, but you always want to start with Bepinex because everything's basically built with Bepinex. So start with it. That's why it's so big. Now that we've extracted our mods, we can remove these compressed versions. So we have the actual folder names here. Now, remember I said Bepinex is the most important one. So when we look in here, we'll see there's the, these icons, manifest, readme, this stuff, and then this Bepinex pack, Valheim. This is what we're gonna build upon. So we're gonna put this to the left, and then we're gonna make a new tab here. 
So what we're going to do is take all the four mods that are built in BepinX, and then we're going to put them into this BepinX folder here, and then we're just going to plop that into our Valheim folder. First, we'll open up Jotun, and then make sure that we put all these in the right place. So to find this folder, you have to go to BepinX, and then there's this plugins folder right here. So it wants to put all of these four in the plugins folder, right? Now we're going to put the next one, which will be the hook gen patcher, OK? This, as you can see, goes into a bit of a different place. It's still in the BepinX folder, but we're going to put this file here in this patchers folder, just like that, quite easy. And then we're going to do the same thing for this config file, OK? and move on to the plan build bond. So let's open it up, and it just goes into plugins, and it has its own folder. And then here, we'll go to plugins, and then just paste it there. So if you were to open this, it's just like Jotun, except there's just one, right? And if you change this, then it won't load the mod, so you can log on to a dedicated server. So that's the easiest way to toggle it on and off. Now we need to add Infinity Hammer. And this one's really simple. It's just this one folder, or this one file, this Infinity Hammer file here. And it goes into the Plugins folder here with Jotun and these. OK? So now let me show you, because we've installed everything, so to speak, into our folder. So what does that look like? Well, we have our Valheim files, basically. And then inside that, will be this BepinX folder. And here, nothing's really changed because we didn't, this is just the main BepinX folder. Then when you go in here, you can see these config patchers and plugins. We've only put something in patchers, plugins, and in config. And when you run the game, it's going to spawn more config files here. So don't be worried if you don't see them all yet. That's just because you haven't launched the game with the mod for the first time. And remember, all you need to look at is these config part, the patchers part, and the plugins part. Most mods are going to go into one of those three folders. Everything else is just kind of part of the BepinX framework, because it's what most mods are built with, right? So now let's take this whole BepinX pack thing here. And we're going to go inside and then copy all of these files. And at this point, you need to locate your specific installation of Valheim. This is going to change depending on if you got it from the Microsoft Store or from Steam. If you're on Steam, like I am, then you have to go into Program Files and then into Steam, Steam Apps, Common, and then from here you can find Valheim open this regular Valheim, Valheim folder right here. This is where you paste everything, just like that. So now we have added all of the folders. Let's launch Valheim and see if it works. There we go. So BepinX is working. And you can tell because when you install BepinX, it brings up the game's console and just constantly shows you what the game's doing. Always be there. You'll also notice in the top left, it says four plugins loaded, Bep and X, F5 to open the console. And then if you look in the bottom right, you can see it says you're playing a modded version of Valheim, etc., etc., etc. That's how you know that it knows the mods are there. But how do we know that everything's working? Well, we have to actually open up our own solo server and then try and use the mods and see if they work. Here we are, we're in our game world. And as you can see, I have the blueprint rune. And see how it says Town secret door? Boom, boom. Oh, this, you recognize this? It's one of those secret doors from the Mistlands dungeons. And you can just put these wherever you want. That means that Infinity Hammer is working. I guess a bit of that corner. And now we're going to add a snap point. Okay, right there. And we're going to also add a sort of center point in the snap point. That just makes it easier to work with. Now we'll go and save. Boom. And this time, I didn't show you this before, but we're just going to cut it. And boom, look, 
it straight up takes it out. It disappears. And so because you put in the snap points, all you have to do is just sort of just hold control and alt, and then boom, it'll do the opposite. And suddenly those are built, everything's back. And because we had our plan build config file to indestructible, now these items aren't destroyable by conventional damage. And the main reason most people have trouble is because they don't know how to troubleshoot when something goes wrong. So let me tell you something about using these mods. Every time this changes here, every time there's an update in the change log, Valheim makes an update, then you gotta re-download the mod. Sometimes you get lucky and you can use an old one and it won't cause any problems, but it just never loads. Like all this weird stuff happens. And it's usually because you're using an outdated mod, okay? So you have to keep them updated. And if you download, for example, if I go back, you see how this is the page for one for a year ago? Maybe you download this, but instead of using the most recent one, you use my link in the video. But I made the video a year ago or something. It's been published for ages and they've updated it. So it won't work. But that's because you have to use the most recent versions. So I'm supplying all these, but whenever you find this, you shouldn't really use the links in the video. You should just Google it yourself, like Google plan build Valheim mod, Jotun Valheim mod, and find the most up-to-date version. That's how you fix most problems. And if you keep having issues, literally just get rid of everything, reinstall it, and it usually works. Use the most up-to-date ones and it'll work. Using everything that you've learned in this tutorial, you can make awesome linear adventures for your friends to play on. As long as you have a computer, then even if they're on an Xbox, you can create anything you can imagine with stuff that exists in Valheim. And for me, that made the game so much more replayable. It's made me feel like I'm practicing game development because it, it's so fascinating seeing how, look at this, that guy, he's running around, he's fighting these goblins, he's getting wild, you know what I mean? It's genuinely cool. And using other people's assets, like you see that tower in the background, that's from Bohemians. And if you go up to the top of that tower, way up and there's a portal to another custom part. And that's how these servers really shine. You essentially have all of these custom adventures and you link them together with hidden portals and challenges and monsters. And then you just watch people play. And as people play, you see what they do and you make it better and better and better. And so now when I play Valheim, I don't just like play Valheim. I literally make the server. I look at what people are doing and it inspires me to make more puzzles and interesting traps and all sorts of stuff. For example, boom, here we are in the boating puzzle. I basically made a track that all you have to do is survive in the boat going down the river. You know, sounds pretty simple, right? But uh, it gets a little bit more complicated than that, as you can see. Things get rather uh, messy, and you have to improvise and make sure you can stay alive. This forces you to use magic and various things in the game. So then you can make it to safety and then keep running. So all you have to do is give them a place to run down and fill it with enemies, and it's really fun. And the best part about it is anything that you feel like Valheim is missing, right? I got tired of hunting down goblin camps and being limited to just a few at a time because it's so fun. I love fighting goblins and especially like big packs and finding new ways. I just like, I love it. It's so awesome. So I made an area with loads and loads and loads of them because that way I can just run down these paths and fight goblins all I want to my heart's content. And that's all thanks to the beautiful way that Valheim is set up and the magic of dedicated servers. So if you're interested in making some kind of custom server like this that your friends can adventure on, or you want to have a more traditional Valheim experience, then please check out my tutorial that's all about setting up your own de dedicated server. Uh, you basically just purchase a server from a server hosting company, and it's less than $20 per month for the server itself. Anybody who wants to play on the server, it's free. It's just somebody 
has to pay for the server to exist. And for me, uh, it opened up a whole new world. Valheim became an MMO when I used these mods and started making servers. I don't even get people to play from YouTube. Like they just find the server because I make it so they know immediately, right? So as soon as somebody joins, boom, you got a cartography table that isn't easily destroyed. You can read it, look at your map, and then there's all of these icons. Suddenly, there's points of interest. And the, the point here is to get the player to be like, oh, that's interesting. I wonder what that is. And then to try and leave. And that's where you get them. Because the point of a lot of these things, they exist and there's stuff there. But the idea is that that just makes you try and go somewhere. And then on the way there, a bunch of crazy stuff happens that you've never, ever seen before in a Valheim playthrough. And that's why these servers are so fun. They're just, it's amazing. And you can just keep playing and make it better every time. So I just build stuff and I add all these secrets like, oh yeah, you, th you think this is interesting? What's this? Oh yeah, banner. Boom. Look at that. Secret. Hidden door. Open the hidden door. Boom. We got a little room full of stuff. You got this secret chest right here. Boom. Secret chest. Oh, someone finds that one? Ah, oh, it's okay. Don't worry about it. We got this secret chest. Boom. Ah, okay. Someone finds that one. Well, then they can actually destroy this and there's a whole secret room there just like the other one. Or they can go all the way out here and then look at this. Boom, another secret room. And get this. Oh, there's armor and stuff, right? But it gets even hairier, man. The secrets are everywhere. You go up here, in here, and boom, down here. Now suddenly you have all the best items that you can use. So if you like this kind of stuff and you think this would be fun, you feel creative, you feel limited by the way Valheim is, check out Plan Build. Also, consider getting your own dedicated server so you can make whatever dream you have about Valheim. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!